Hello all my truth seekers, welcome to the truth show. In this video, I will discuss the theory of it being to Egypt. This is why most of the prime places in America are like Africa. Yes, the Grand Canyon was Egypt here in America. Or should I say that time, the White House or Washington DC. This new revelation goes very deep. Everything we've been taught has been a lie. Let's talk. Please note that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I've deeply researched all of my information. This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories as you read in the description or title. With that said, either in the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. For this video, I will show you some of the artifacts, mountains and locations in America with some videos. But you all should know there is more proof of America being the original Egypt than Africa. As I said in many videos mentioning the Grand Canyon and the Egyptian artifacts, the Grand Canyon isn't the only location where these ancient structures are. I know some of you may find it hard to believe the notion of Egypt being in America first. But if we think about it, it makes sense. The land and the structure in Africa are not substantially run down. Even after the alleged flood, they're well preserved for the great flood to have been there and something that's been there for thousands of years, they say. So what does this mean? It means that the places in the Bible are in America, not Africa. So that means that Africa is a wealthy land, yes, but historical and biblical events didn't occur there. This also explains Christianity and why it is heavily praised here in America, more so in other places worldwide. This also explains the legend of Atlantis. A lot of people think it's somewhere around Africa. But no one seems to have found anything. There are different theories of, of different revelations and stories coming out, talking about Morocco and things of that nature. Well, no one really knows. But no one seems to have found anything. So they said it's a fictional story, primarily because they can't find it. Could it be because they're looking in the wrong country? Legend has it it's submerged into the Atlantic Ocean, since Plato describes Athens as resembling his idea state in the Republic. The Atlantis story is meant to bear witness to the superiority of his concept of a state. Republic is a Latin phrase that means respublic, meaning public affair. It is a state where the most political power is held. In our case, it's Washington. But believe it or not, New York was the first city called the United States Capitol. The first Capitol slash Congress hall building was in Philadelphia. New York is also along the Atlantic Ocean, where the city of Atlantis allegedly submerged in the ocean. Coincidentally, where they claim the Bermuda Triangle is, could that area be so powerful because it holds so much power beneath the water? Because the city of Atlantis is beneath it. It could also be the reason for the recent hurricanes in that area. They also say a dimension shift has occurred from the third to the fifth power. This shift means many teaching and habits are no longer needed and tolerated. These people will be judged and couples, individuals and who are not with the revolution or new age they will be destroyed, divorced, and torn apart. So many more couples may have been married or together for a long time will be separating or divorcing. The new dimension shift allegedly started in 2020. You can search for this on YouTube or TikTok or read many books that say when, it, when this would happen or details of it happening already. Getting back to this revelation. This will explain why many explorers and archaeologists 
are coming up empty in Africa. When they allegedly find the long lost descendants of Africa with no substantial proof of their origin and the mummies they find, they make up and say it's a prime pharaoh. When it's not, they go further by putting makeup and wigs, scraping the color off them and rendering fake European whitewashed images of them. Yes, Europeans whitewashed these mummies and put blonde or red hair on them. Despite the historical carvings and sketches of these individuals being of dark complexion. I swear it's like the new age Egyptian ignore power of melanin. Something they do not carry and cannot. Something they do not have. They also ignore their culture and Negroes slash colored blacks still hold today. Shown all over the wall, statues, etc. All over the world. Not to mention the power and density of our DNA. But this isn't the only proof of the original Egypt being in America and being Negroes, colors, or blacks. Okay, if you look at some of the ocean's locations and origins name of Egypt, what was the name before it was called Egypt? It was called Ta America or Ta Mary or Ta Americans or Ta Mera. The word Mary means beloved and the word Ta means the. You put it together and you get the beloved. Over the centuries they started calling it the Amari, meaning again the beloved. They later moved the Ta to the end and called it Amari Ta. And with translation and languages is now being called America. Also it has been reported that the Mississippi River is the Nile River they switched it. The Nile River is supposed to be the longest river in the world, along with the Mississippi and Amazon River. If you look at the two rivers, they look the same. So you can see why the mistake happened. But what we need to do is go deeper. Look at the ancient texts or biblical scriptures describing events surrounding the Nile or Mississippi River. It says in Joshua 13.3, it says from the Shear, which is east of Egypt, even as far as the border of Ekron to the north, it is counted as the Canaanite, the five lords of the Philistines, the Gazites, the Ashtodites, the Ashkelenonites, the Judahites, the Ekronites, and the Avite. Suppose you look at the old Illinois, Washington, D.C., Florida, or Memphis map, in that era, you would find Cairo or Egypt everywhere. These findings coincide with this old map that gives you ancient Egypt and more. But the places that stick out are Egypt, Mississippi, Egypt, Arkansas, and Egypt, Tennessee, being the closest. And because they're east of Ekron, Kentucky, going north, all you have to do is just follow the Mississippi River going north, ending up in Ekron, Kentucky. Yeah, uh, Shiloh or Shear, east of Egypt from all three locations, just like it says in the Bible. And if you look closely, many lakes surround the river, which makes sense from the Bible's perspective and the old map showing where Egypt used to be. Also, if you read the Bible, they separate Egypt and Africa. They say in Egypt or Africa, never say the two together. This also confirms the map that shows Africa being much closer to what we call the United States. And again, maybe this is why they can't find artifacts of memorability of Jesus or more because it is really here in the United States and possibly buried in the mountains or underground houses or prominent land structures. This will account for all the mummy like coffins, artifacts, etc. found under the World Trade Center during the cleanup, Central Park and many other places around America. Not to mention the findings of lost cities and old kings and queens remains also found in America. I bet if they get permission, they may find some of those kings and queens and historical characters mentioned in the Bible in America. There was two Egypts. Mm. So you had the new Egypt, mm -hmm. which is overseas. Mm -hmm. But the first Egypt was actually in the Americas. And many people do not know this. And I also want to point out as well that, you know, you've heard the term. Most people think it's a theory, but I can tell you from cosmic knowledge that it's a very real thing. 
this planet has been recreated seven times. And so during the time period, during those seven times that the planet had been created, Egypt was in different places on Kai. Okay? And so with Egypt being in a different place on Kai, um, you can begin to start researching old world maps um, where they were speaking about um, the very first Egypt. If you guys look at the Mississippi River, the Mississippi River is actually the first now river that took place. Um, and we also, if you look at Memphis, Tennessee, this isn't the, you know, the, the Memphis overseas is not, is, is not the same as the Memphis in the States, but they put a lot of information out there um, for us to see that's been hidden in plain sight. There was a theory circulated not too long ago that said that there was a path in the Grand Canyon that will take you all the way to Africa. But now people are starting to add to this theory and take it even further. The added theory claims that the Americas, which is North and South America, is connected to or is ancient Egypt. But this was covered up to throw people off of biblical prophecy and historical events. While this theory sounds wild, I find it very interesting that in 1909, an article released called Explorations in the Grand Canyon that talks about finding Egyptian artifacts within it. There was also certain substances and materials from North and South America found in ancient Egyptian tombs next to mummies. The theory goes on to say that the Mississippi River is actually the ancient Egyptian Nile River and that they put all of this in plain sight by building modern day pyramids in places like Memphis and Vegas and also by putting pyramids on the back of the dollar bill. Now this theory could definitely be a stretch but leave a like if you want me to talk a little more about this and let me know what you think in the comments. Guess what, my truth seekers? Did you know that you can get exclusive commercial free videos on my Patreon? I post my viral and block YouTube videos on there and more and stories that I wrote. You know, I write stories, people. Oh, yes. I post them on there. I'm going to start doing my video diary on there pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, I need to communicate with my truth seekers. They are lifesavers. I love you all. Oh, okay. I'm supposed to be advertising my Patreon. The link is below. The Mississippi River is actually the Nile River. And the Nile River runs very far. That's why when you go read stories of ancient Egypt, they talk to you about Egypt was a beautiful city that sat right off the Nile River. It was another ancient city, beautiful city that was not that far from Egypt. Egypt was a beautiful city that sat off the Nile River. There was another beautiful city not that far from Egypt that set off the Nile River too, and it was called Memphis. Now over here in America, look at where Memphis sits at. It sit right off the Mississippi River, don't it? If you go look at a map, look at the way the Nile River run. Now go look at the way the Mississippi River run. Go look at the way this, the land is shaped on the map in Egypt where they showing you how the Nile River run. Now go look at a map of North America and look at like the Chicago area, Wisconsin area, and the Mississippi River. You're gonna see the same land, you're gonna see the same little body of water, water gap. You see what I'm saying? Like, oh, okay, right. That's the that's the Midwest. That's around them states, and then that lead down to that, and that's oh, okay, that drop down there. Oh, okay, cool, that makes sense. I see how they hit it. I'm giving y'all divine cosmic. Intel right now, you feel me? Like they'll never, they'll never show you this, man. Do you know how dangerous this is? What I'm telling y'all right now. Go look up the longest river in any any salt, like any any regular river that's running and flowing. They gonna say it's the the Nile. The Nile is one of the longest rivers in the world. Now go look up the Mississippi River and see if it's not also one of the longest rivers in the world. So, so you actually think the Egyptians or the Egyptian-like people were here because they're, I have, I've ran across some people that found some Egyptian artifacts in Colorado and Idaho and the Egyptian yeah. belt you're talking about. There was one found in the mountains east of Provo. Um, in Nevada there was some found. Um, and then uh, you know the stories of the Egyptians in the Grand Canyon and then I have a friend that found some Egyptian hieroglyphs you know, along uh, Lake Powell which would have been along the Colorado River. Um, 
So, uh, it's interesting you'd say that. So, you well, know, see, there was... see, an interesting thing that's kind of kept quiet is, is mummifying bodies was Egyptian. Hmm. That, that they found a few scattered around the world, basically. The second largest place they found mummified bodies is in the old Utah territory. Really? And they found them from the highest caves to clear down in New Mexico and stuff. They were mummified. And very few on this continent, yeah. Really? Mummified out of the old original Utah territory. Really? Interesting. Yeah. Utah was an Egyptian. There's history on him. That was a man. But his name, and you've probably seen it, his name was P-T-A-H. But the P was pronounced as a U. Uh -huh. Utah. Huh. So I don't know what, I don't know what Reagan and them knew, but he knew this was the Utah Territory. Huh. And that the Utah Territory is part of Wyoming. Yeah. Nevada, they clear down in, down in California. Yeah. Uh, Colorado. Yeah. Now I think that was originally called Utah's Territory. See, that, that day was up Kern Creek, and get, Dad got in a talkative mood. Boy, we should have been older, because I was only 12 then. He said, uh, the Red Ledges was the biggest and longest work mine, the biggest, richest, and longest work mine in this, this area. That was worked originally by the Egyptians. Really? He said the front of the red ledge is where you see the ledges now it was just like the back of the red ledges until it caved in. Hmm. So that was massive. He said it just sloped down in the front the same as it sloped in the back till hmm. it all caved in in the northwind. Like, uh, caused it. And he said it didn't cave in because it was shabby mine and it was mine very well. What they do fam? I finna explain to y'all how we the Egyptians, how America is Egypt, and how the oppressors use something that we use for ourselves for healing to kill us. Now TikTok, this is for educational purposes only. But everybody know about this time that happened in America. This happened around the 1980s to the early 1990s. Obviously, this caused a lot of people to die, you know, head down the wrong road, you know what I'm saying? Just basically ruin their life and people they love too. And you should know that this was put out by the CIA, not only to kill people, but for profit. But why did they use this? We gotta go into the history of this right here. So let's go into the history of it. So y'all know this is a mummy, right? And as the look of it, it looks like a person that looks like me. But moving on. The reason I'm bringing up mummies, right? Because I already had told y'all in my other video that they had found catacombs of mummies in Kentucky, which is obviously in America. But this will get interesting, fam. If you didn't know, now you know. So it says ancient Egyptian mummies had high levels of cocaine, nicotine, and that long ass word right there, right? But it also say, but where did the ancient Egyptians obtain the products from? So as you can clearly see above my head, it says cocoa and tobacco are undoubtedly originated from the South America, right? Now think about this, fam. There's an Egypt all the way over there in Africa, right? And they found mummies that had cocaine, high level of cocaine and tobacco in them. And cocaine is originally from South America. Let's keep going. Fam, up top it says it was an Egyptian priestess during the 21st dynasty, right? That was mummified. She was so-called one of the cocaine mummies. Nothing was known about her life. She was a priestess and chantress in the temple of Amun at Thebes. Those who don't know, there's a Thebes in Illinois, Chicago. That's Thebes right there. It's right along the Mississippi River. That's Memphis right there. It's the Egypt in Africa. That's Thebes right there. And Memphis is right right. So hear me out, fam. They finding mummies, right, with cocaine and all that other stuff in them, right? But there's mummies in America along this region, right? And they say that cocaine originated somewhere down here in South America, right? So they be trying to say that the Egyptians came from, you know, Egypt and traveled all the way to America, to the South Americas before Columbus did, right? Which could possibly be true. But what about 
if they was already here in America, Egypt, and all they had to do was just travel down here. And why did they have cocaine in the system? Read some of the benefits. The Andean region, that's South America, fam. The last one was cocoa, this is tobacco. Read it. Stop bleeding for healing. That's why they found it in us, fam, because we were healing ourselves. And they took it, cooked it up, made it into some hard, and gave it to everybody, and they killed everybody. They didn't want us to know, fam, but now we know. Peace to the guys, I say. The land of the eagle, the Garden of Eden, Atlantis, all references to what we know as America. America, the Egypt before Egypt of Kemet or Mizraim. We're in the seventh cycle. Egypt of Kemet was of the sixth cycle. Atlantis and its ten islands with North America and South America is from the fifth cycle. When it sank, Africa was but an infant getting ready to come into the forefront of history. Emerald Tablets, Tablet 1. The land of the hairy barbarians is the land now known as Egypt. Kem was the first seat of learning established by the Atlanteans. From there, later they sent emissaries to other barbarous tribes in different parts of the Earth's surface. This was the plan mentioned to use Kem as the central home of the new race wisdom. Knowledge is power. Pastor, and his pastor was like, y'all young people's finding out the secret. And I asked him, what secret is he talking about? He said, yes, America is Egypt. He was like, that's what the Seminole War was about, the Louisiana Purchase was about. And he was like, look up this map, it's called Tamari. Oh, and he said, y'all, it's Tamari Kings. So I went to look up at the map, right? And I was amazed he was right. He was like, that's y'all true nationality. And he was like, when the Seminole War broke out, that's when they won and they took over America and started calling them Americans and they spelt it different. And the Bible is based upon y'all. All pastors know this, Freemasonry know this, everybody know this. Pyramid on the Nile in Northeast Africa doesn't have stair steps going up it. It doesn't have temples on top of its summits. They could not go and break through the boat on the temples atop those great pyramids. There are none there. And that was the clue that Egypt was writing about the Americans. And the deeper I got into the records, the clearer it got. They started actually saying, and because I'm in love that land so much, he said this is the love land, and that word was Mary, the beloved, Mary, M-E-R-I, Mary. And the land, of course, as before, is Ta, the beloved land, Ta Mary. And they kept that name and just put the Ta on the end of it, so Ta Mary became a Mary Ta, we simply say, a Mary Ka. We kept the name that Egypt gave to the Americans. So that was the big mystery behind that $10 million map that Martin Waltzmuller made and then put the name America on it in 1507. And then those who knew and those who were trying to hide things said, wait a minute, you can't put that name on here. And the next time you reprinted that map, it was gone. It was gone. Because that's the name that Egypt had given the land. Now you know your national. Where did he got this information? So the ancient Egypt, the original one, not the one that we know of today, is actually in America. I know, that's, it's hard for me to wrap my head around this one too. But did you know that there's more pyramids in North America than there are in Egypt? Which is odd, because you would think that if the Egyptians were from modern day Egypt, there should be more pyramids there, not over here. But how did they get over here in the first place? Also, look at our dollar bill. It literally has a pyramid on the back of it. And that's the Washington Monument, which look a lot like obelisks over in Egypt. Really, the similarities are insane. Also, did you know that on April 5th in 1909, there was an article published about the exploration of G.E. Kincaid, which was funded by the Smithsonian, and where they discovered an enormous cave system in the Grand Canyon while G.E. Kincaid was floating down the Colorado River. 
and this cave system extended 1600 meters into the ground like that's massive and they found egyptian hieroglyphics they found tools they found pottery they found even mummies in it they found an entire room full of them but they won't tell you that because to this day the smithsonian is in denial of ever funding such an exploration and there are claims that ge kincaid never even existed but that's not even where it stops look at this old map of america it's called t american and in the egyptian hieroglyphic dictionary t amaru which means people of the land of the nile flood aka egyptians t amaru T Amari, land of the Egyptians. These are the Cherokee and Pawnee native Moors, which were the original black people in T Amari, the land of Egypt. And that leads to believe that the Moors of T Amari, the land of Egypt, are the original Israelites and the original children of God. We heard about these caves in the western panhandle of Oklahoma, far out west in which ancient Egyptians and Phoenicians came to this land 1500 B.C., 3500 years ago, and they left their art, their markings in the rock called petroglyphs, claiming the land for their god, Baal. So this is how we began to see these ancient Egyptians came here and claimed the land. They brought that spirit of Baal to our land even before the white man ever came. It's here. almost like they made a covenant. They with did. This they Baal. Made, exactly said that's exactly right. They made a covenant and a blood covenant with Baal, and they claimed this land. And there's a timeline in that cave that wherever the sun hits it at any particular day, it tells the sun worshipers, the Baal worshipers, what worship to do on that day to Baal. Seeing evidence of ancient Egypt in the Grand Canyon. Is there, within the Grand Canyon, an enigmatic system of tunnels that is evidence of an ancient Egyptian voyage to America? Is it all bogus? Or is the truth most likely somewhere in between? On April 5, 1909, a front page story in the Arizona Gazette reported on an archaeological expedition in the heart of the Grand Canyon funded by the Smithsonian Institute, which had resulted in the discovery of Egyptian artifacts. April 5th is close to April 1st, but then not quite. So perhaps the story could be true? The original story goes that the team found an underground network of tunnels, high above the Colorado River, containing various ancient artifacts, statues, and even mummies. The article concludes, some interesting archaeological discoveries were unearthed and altogether the trip was of such interest that he will repeat it next winter in the company of friends. Less than a month later, the same newspaper seemed to continue their story where they had left it off. Kincaid was now talking about his interesting archaeological discoveries, which consisted out of a series of tunnels and passages with a cross chamber near the entrance, containing a statue. The idol almost resembles Buddha, though the scientists are not certain as to what religious worship it represents. So, where does this leave us? Perhaps the answer is somewhere in the middle of this controversy. With so many caves, some must contain something. Kincaid never said it was Egyptian, he just made comparisons. It could simply have been native. Even if Kincaid and Jordan were real people, the sensationalist flavorings of the report are all due to the anonymous author. The report shrouded in mystery reads, Discoveries which almost conclusively prove that the race which inhabited this mysterious cavern, hewn in solid rock by human hands, was of oriental origin, possibly from Egypt, tracing back to Ramses. If their theories are borne out by the translation of the tablets engraved with hieroglyphics, the mystery of the prehistoric peoples of North America, their ancient arts, who they were and whence they came, will be solved. Egypt and the Nile and Arizona and Colorado will be linked by a historical chain running back to ages which staggers the wildest fancy of the fiction. With the crown in Sedona, okay? These things are real, you guys, and, and nobody's on here trying to make you believe it. You have to see these things for yourself. The lion heads are in Sedona. The rocks have been worn. Look at the um, the Olmec, the statue of the Olmecs in Sedona, you guys. Sedona, Arizona. Well, let me see if I can find something else. Um, 
that I thought would be more uh, really interesting. Singing birds. These, these are bird beings, you guys. Again, bird beings are in the rocks. These are ancient temples in Sedona from ancient Atlantis. They try to say that Atlantis is a is a fable, is a myth. No, it is not. It predates Kemet. Okay? Okay. Queens and kings of Sedona. Atlantean queens and kings. These are the queens and kings of Atlantis. Okay? Carved within the rocks in Sedona. Right? King Zo Zozar. Kings of Thunder Mountain. These ancient carvings have been worn over a millennia. Right? The, you cannot deny this. When water wears on rocks, then the, the appearance of them disintegrates. Look. Look at that face right there. We are here. We have been here. We didn't come from no daggone Africa. We have been in the United States. We are indigenous to the United States. Because the United States is Egypt. And, the, and when I have the opportunity to go back to Sedona, look at this. When I have the opportunity to go back to Sedona, I will give you guys a, uh, and I will go back on it. I will just, I will go back on this tour just to create live footage, live videos of these. Because this is for real. This is for real. Nobody playing like no games. Like we're not trying to, we're not clout chasing. We're trying to get you hip to your own fucking lineage. We trying to we trying to make you aware of your power because they got you thinking that your power is somewhere across the ocean. No it is not. Your power is right here in the United States. They they have found ancient relics, gold tablets under the in within the Grand Canyon and they don't want you to know this. The more they have you looking up far away from yourself, the longer it would take for you to come and step into your true power. And, on, and ain't nobody on here debating with y'all. You don't have to believe this. You do not have to believe this, but it is the truth. Because I have seen this with my very own eyes. This is, um, this is Thunder Rock. This is a temple. I stood on, on, this, on the mountain right across from this. And it, it's a ancient temple sitting right there in front of us. People go to Sedona all the time because they know this. People know, know this before uh, our people know this. The, the Asians, they stay in Sedona. The Anglos, the, the Caucasians, they stay in Sedona because they know what's there. Do you understand? And it is us who are original from, from this place who don't even believe, right? Look at that. That we are from this land. This is our land. Uh, statues of Buddha, for instance. Now, now uh, Forbidden History Revealed uh, by Steve Quayle really uh, talks about this, this man, John Wesley Powell, his comings, his goings. Uh, he operated on a, uh, on a premise, and his premise was that there is a certain historical narrative that we want to preserve for the Americas, and any other historical narrative we're going to hide away as, uh, as quickly as we possibly can. Now, to say that is one thing. To see this <laughs> is another thing indeed. Uh, because when I, when I watched your production, it, it suddenly became real. At, at, at the visceral level, it, this whole thing, and I, and I said to myself, I now understand for the first time how all of, of the, the conspiratorial uh, ideas uh, th that the world has had are locked together into one idea, and that is to hide biblical truth. That is the conspiracy. That's the bottom line. And, and the word I was given by the people that fight the things that go bump in the night is that, remember, it's never what you see on the surface, but what's underneath. And so when we're talking about the history 
of the Grand Canyon. Now, this is what else is interesting, Gary. The giant mummies were taken to Area 51. And it's fascinating <laughs> that Area 51 has gotten the, uh, you know, the, 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 what would you say, the fame it has. <laughs> so you know? Were they taken there in a flying saucer? Yes. I just have to ask. Yeah. But, no, I'm, I'm kidding. But, but I guess we need to laugh a little bit because this is such a, a bizarre and dark motif. You almost have to just take a deep breath and look away. Once you begin to realize that how we have been manipulated. Well, and it's a... Here's a brief word from my sponsor. The world's falling apart. Every day, another shocking headline makes you wonder what tomorrow will bring. That's why those who know what's coming are using today to prepare. I'm talking about getting your family some high quality emergency food from My Patriot Supply. My Patriot Supply is a nation's leading preparedness company. They've been in business for going on 14 years now, and they've served millions of American families. Now they want to help you by giving you $50 off their popular four week emergency food kit. Oh, yes. You get four weeks of food per person with meals designed to give you more than 2,000 calories a day. By the way, this food stays fresh up to 25 years in proper storage, so it will be there when you need it. Other food goes bad first, you know what I mean? So don't wait. Go to prepare with my link here with the truth and claim your four-week emergency food kit. You will save $50 per kit if you act now. So prepare with me at preparewithtruth.com. Don't wait. Do it today, y'all.